Good morning. Today is Thursday, March 7th, and today we'll cover the trades for Yield Max Funds, TSLY, CONY, and MSTY. But first, uh, real quick, I just want to show everyone where I get my information to do these videos. Um, this is obviously the Yield Max website. This is the, you know, the cover page. But if you wanted to view individual funds, there's a little, you know, little thing to click there. Then you click our ETFs, then covered call ETFs. And then <clears throat> if you wanted to do Kony first, um, then obviously you pull up Kony and it talks about Kony, shows the distribution rate, shows the dates, the payments, so on and so forth. But the information to track the trades is more towards the bottom. So um, if you want the intraday trades, which again, if I click this now, it's blank, I'll show you. It's blank because they're, they remove it the following day. So if you wanna get the intraday trade data, you have to pull it right after the market closes. Um, however, they, they actually don't post it until like 5 p.m., 5.30 p.m. So you have to get it between 5.30 p.m. and I guess 12 a.m. the next day. So that's where you'd get that. And if you want the... Uh, you know the outs the overall holdings all holdings you'd hit download all holdings and then obviously all the documentation is down below so anyway what did coney do yesterday um three transactions not your typical transactions though because you'll see an s and a bc up front so they the s is for the sell so they sold a call bc they buy to close a put so if they did that, same strike, same expiration, that means they had to close out one of their synthetic positions. So in doing so, they also have to close out one of their weekly positions. Why? Well, my guess, um, which is probably you know the right guess, is people so are selling out, which means the cash you know is not there. So people are selling out of Coney maybe taking their profits, maybe going to another fund, who knows, it doesn't matter, but that is why they have to reduce the synthetic position and reduce the weekly call position. All right, let's see what it looks like on the spreadsheet. So here is Kony, uh, they have a 200 uh, synthetic position, right? So yesterday, um, they had to remove uh, 1,190 contracts, which is why I made it negative. So, but the fact that if you if you look at coin price, it's 238.55, the strike of this synthetic is 200. So since the price of the underlying is greater than the strike price of the synthetic, um, them selling out is actually very profitable. So if you look, they sold their call, uh, they made $51 per share on that. Um, and they did when they bought to close their put, they only had to pay 1350. So obviously, you know, the call netted 6 million, the put debited 1.6 million. So that's not bad, right? That's 4.4 million uh, in income. And that will be added to the uh, March profits in yellow, as you'll see. So yes, it sucks that people are selling out. However, as far as the synthetic is concerned, it's, uh, it's an income generator. However, on the weekly call side, uh, not so much, but we'll, first, before we get into that, let's look at the price differential yesterday. So, I mean, what a week, man, what a week. So if we look, you know, we had three trading days already, right? So the fourth was Monday, coin went up 11.36%, and then the next day it went down 5.4%, and then yesterday it went up 10.05%. Like these funds are just insane. <clears throat> and then what did Coney do this week? Coney went up 8.69% on Monday and Tuesday it dropped 3.29%. And then yesterday it only went up 0.46%. So not the greatest. However, um, you see that big differential and it's not really, well, some of it's because they're close to being capped or are capped. And, but the main reason is it was X dividend date yesterday. So in all of these funds, you're going to see, you know, there's not going to be the same, um, you know, capture 
I'll say. So obviously on X dividend date, the the ETFs like Kony will drop at the open by at least the distribution payment. And then obviously from there, it's plus or minus whatever's going on with the underlying and all that. All right, so what happened with the contracts? Again, they had to close out 1,190 contracts and they had to pay $8 to do so. So obviously $8 is greater than the 220 premium they brought in. So when all said and done, that was a loss of $690,000. So again, it was only eight contracts of, <clears throat> I'm sorry, one, it was only 1,190 contracts of the, you know, the total they had before, which was how many? 16, that, I don't know, if I highlight this, I can get it. Well, it doesn't matter really, honestly. 17,550, that was the, you know, what they opened, how many contracts. All right, so cash and treasuries, uh, you see cash went down. So you would expect that if people are selling out. So cash is now in the negative by 22.9 million. Overall, cash and treasuries is down 3 million over yesterday. Outstanding shares, 14,550,000. Uh, you know, weekly income, uh, from the, you know, income from the weekly calls is a debit. So we're not going to cover that breakdown. All right, active tab. Well, we now have 16,360 contracts with a 240 strike. It's actually still out of the money, 0.61% out of the money. That expires in two trading days, which is March 8th. Their 30-day IV back over 100, 102.67%. Coin price is currently 238.55. Coney price is currently 2602 with the potential capital gains of 16 cents which is pretty good. Uh, and now the emoji, this is the Coney Fund Manager. They are now sweating because they don't wanna lose. They don't wanna lose their weekly calls, right? They already lost eight, you know, not eight, 1,190, they lost that one, but they, they're hoping that coin can close below that strike price. Um, at least that's what I'm thinking. Again, who knows, But uh, but yeah. So let's move on. Let's go to the payment tab. So the synthetic for March is obviously doing good now because as we spoke, it brought in 4.4 million, the short call income for the weekly. Um, you know, that brought in a debit yesterday, 952,000. Um, obviously the credit would have gone into last month or at least that's what I'm reflecting. Again, I don't know the cutoff, so this is what I'm using. Net income is 3.5 million. Um, so with the current outstanding share, we're showing a total income per share of 24 cents. Again, way too early to even talk about this, but that's the update. Outstanding holdings, um, 885 it would cost to close out the 240 weekly call. Uh, obviously too much money right now. So they're going to let this run, run through as they should. And hopefully coin should stay flat or go down. Not likely, but we'll see. You never know. Net asset value is currently at 379 million. NAV is at 2611. And then trade price is at 2602. So look at that. What a discount right there. Just kidding. I don't really care about that, but some people do. Um, so yeah, that's it for Coney. Let's look at the, uh, the pre-market. Mark, again, I use marketwatch.com. Just, I don't know. I just find it to be the easiest. And again, I record everything on my phone via landscape. So it has to work that way too. All right. So coin is down uh, pre-market. Again, for context, it's before 5 a.m. Eastern time. Uh, so a lot can change. So it's down 0.35%. It's at 237.71. But again, pre-market is what it is. You know, you get the gist. All right, next, let's go to test. You know what? Let's go to Misty because they had a trade. So MSTY, which again, the underlying is MSTR, three transactions yesterday. 
Um, and this one was normal because they actually had interest. They had people buy into the fund. So it's a buy call. You see the B, that's B for buy call, 13 contracts. And then sell put, um, again, 13 contracts. That's the synthetic position. And then down below, um, they're selling a call on the weekly and it expires on, in two days on Friday, March 8th. So let's take a look at that when we plug it into the spreadsheet. Okay, so here's the synthetic 950. Uh, keep in mind the price of the underlying is 1,246. The price, the strike price of the synthetic is 950. So take a look at that. So it's gonna it obviously cost us a pretty penny to do the buy call part since the price of the underlying is so much higher than the price of the strike. So we had to pay $342 per share for the buy call. And then we got credited only $43 for the sell put. So yeah, that, that hurt us a little. So, but again, in the end, you know, our debit for the March profits from the synthetic is 943,000. But if they closed it today, they'd make it 2.9 million. So all is well with this synthetic position. Unfortunately, every time they add, it's going to cost them money, which is typically why they would roll it sooner than later. However, you know, they saw how quickly MSTR can drop. So maybe they're uncertain what to do or I don't know. We'll see. This one's a tough one. Very tough. All right, let's take a look at how we did. Let's look at this week too, the whole week. Um, all right, so Monday, MSTR was up 23%, Tuesday down 21%, and yesterday down 6.58%. All right, MSTY Monday was up 15%, yesterday was down 14, no, I'm sorry, not yesterday, Tuesday was down 14.3%, and then yesterday was up 16.96%. Wait a second, how the hell? 18 minus 17... Oh, okay. No. How in the hell? 20, was it even? That's crazy. Oh, this formula screwed up, see? These damn spreadsheets, man. Sometimes... Okay. Sorry, guys. Sometimes uh, I copy these over from an old spreadsheet and then I had, you know, changed the formula and I never updated it. So correction, MSTR was up 18.57% yesterday. So comparably, MSTY was up 16.96%, which is pretty good. So again, the 13 contracts they added to the synthetic, they did a weekly call with a strike price of $14.50 um, and they made $26.20. For two days, pretty damn good. Break evens fourteen seventy six twenty. This is sixteen point three five percent out of the money. Um, and <clears throat> cash and treasuries overall went up a million. So, what are we looking at? Well, outstanding shares four hundred and twenty five thousand. Total income um, is a debit, so we won't go into the further breakdown. So they're losing money on the weekly calls and check out this good lord you know this third fund is making me work for sure can't wait to do an easier one all right we got four contracts 1230 strike price that's in the money that's 1.3 percent in the money but that's only four that's the smallest position eight contracts with 1350 strike price that's 8.33 percent out of the money that's definitely in danger. Uh, we have 60, this is the biggest position, 60 contracts with a 1,430 strike, 14.75% out of the money. And then we have 13 contracts, 1450 strike, 16.35% out of the money. And then we have 15 contracts, 1600 strike, 28% out of the money. So that was a mouthful, but yeah. Uh, most of them are out of the money, so we're still sitting pretty, So, but you never know. You never know with a stock. 30-day IV is sitting at 148%. MSTR price is 1,246.21. 
Misty price is over 30 again, so you got to love it. And I'm showing it could have more potential capital gains. <sighs> Sorry, I take a sip of water. $4.87, so could you imagine? My reaction is still, this is just like a bank. This is just print, printing everyone money. This is like such a dominant fund. And for people who bought in on Tuesday, they're very happy because they got you know, like a $4 jump in share price already. All right, payment details. Again, it doesn't really matter right now, but synthetic income, you know, the, the credit obviously decreased. So uh, overall, the net income is a debit. So we're not really making any money yet. Um, we will, assuming MSTR stays where it's at or goes up and they could roll the synthetic. They'll definitely make money on that. On the weekly calls, um, to be determined. Outstanding holdings. Now, again, I highlighted the five uh, open positions, uh, which are going to cost a pretty penny to close, but we'll see. We still have two trading days. Let's not worry too much here. Uh, net asset value, $12.7 million. NAV is thirty oh five, and trade price is thirty sixty two. Looks like a pretty decent gap right there. So again, let's take a look at the um, pre-market. Keeping in mind, it's still before 5 a.m., so a lot can change by the time this video comes out. MSTR is up in the pre-market. It's up 1.24%. It's currently at 1,261.66, which is pretty good. So, um, yeah, that's it for MSTY. Let's go to TSLY. Uh, no trades for them. A little boring, right? Uh, Tesla continues its little slump. So the synthetic 220 is still in danger. Um, always keep in mind, see this 131 in, in column G. This is how much it's going to cost to close out the synthetic. So, you know, again, that's that's when it's going to be like a taxable event when they close it out. However, it's still paper, like it's a paper loss. It's it's in the nav though. Like this debit is in the nav. So it's not like when they when it happens, we're gonna lose money. It is it's already in there. So um, but regardless, we really we need Tesla to start moving upwards um, for these synthetics to recover a little. So the synthetic 220 again is in the hole. This expires next week, but it'll cost us 131 million. The synthetic 185, which was always in a good position, this will actually cost us now 10.3 million. So both synthetics are looking pretty crappy right now. Uh, Tesla has been not that great lately, um, but I'm buying. I'm buying Tesla on my swing trading account that is for sure so let's take a look at this week for tesla monday down 7.16 percent tuesday down 3.93 percent and then yesterday down another 2.32 percent so not a great week uh tsly monday was down 5.95 percent tuesday it was down 3.69 percent and then wednesday it was down 7.09 percent so yeah everyone is you know, you, you just see, like, I see the comments, I see the posts, I see the, the videos. I'm selling my Tesla, Tesla sucks, blah, blah, blah. It has nothing to do with Tesla. It has everything to do with Tesla, at least this week. Granted, you know, you know, some historically Tesla could have done better, like the fun. However, like this week, you can't blame anything on Tesla. There's nothing that they did wrong. This is just clearly the underlying going down. And since they have a synthetic position, which mimics the underlying, Tesla is going down with it. So nothing has changed. So if you believe in the underlying, then it will come back up, right? So selling for a loss right now is not, I don't think, the best ch choice of action. You know, when things get bad, selling, I don't think, is ever the answer, especially if you believe in the underlying. Uh, but again, guys, this is not financial advice. I'm not a financial advisor. You know, take these videos. These are fun and entertainment. So hopefully you're having fun. Anyway, I got that out of the way. So cash and treasuries. Cash is now negative 30 million. So cash and treasuries went down 10 million yesterday. So I'm surprised 
that, well, actually, no, yesterday, well, no, ex-dividend data already reflected. So this means more people sold out of TSLY, but they didn't close. They didn't have to close any of the synthetics, That's, which is surprising. Or maybe they just didn't want to because they would get burnt. <laughs> I don't know. But outstanding shares, 45525000 No income yet. Again, it's just we just opened the March, so... Active tab, what are we looking at here? Uh, <clears throat> well, our weekly calls are doing good for what for what that's worth. <clears throat> Again, we harped on that this weekend. We were pissed about their strike price, the 205. And sure enough, that looks pretty damn secure at the moment. But anyway, we got 280 contracts with a 192.50 strike. That's 9% out of the money. We have 600 contracts with a 195 strike. That's 10.46% out of the money. We have 42,080 contracts, biggest position, obviously. 205 strike, we know that one. 16.12% of the money. Who would have thought? Not me. Tesla price, 176.54. 30-day IV, 48.79%. So again, the reason we pay them the 0.99% is just this. We would not sell, you know, based on what the price was last week, we would never, never, you know, sell this call. Right? What was the price? If you look at it, the price was two oh two sixty four. They sold a weekly call at two oh five, you know, and they made three fifty five per share. We would have never I I would have never done that. This is why they are in the position that they are and I am not. Right? They understand the fund. They clearly saw something that I did not. So obviously, yes, this is why I own Tesla. This is why I'm paying 0.99%. You know, there's nothing you can do about Tesla. Tesla went down, but guess what? We're earning options premium, right? We're gonna probably profit this whole amount, which is outstanding. I mean, again, we have two trading days, so I don't wanna jinx anything. But th again, I'm just trying to explain the whole point of owning this fund, right? Right now, we're, you know, we're beating the underlying, right? If you look, every day it goes down, we beat it, right? We beat it, we beat it. Yesterday, we didn't beat it only because it was ex-dividend date. So hopefully that makes sense to you guys. Anyway, uh, I think I covered the 30-day IV, but 48.79%. Tesla's at 176.54, which to me, that's just like a, a discount and a half. Uh, Tesla is 15.99, and price of potential capital gains. I know it's only two trading days, but... 256, are you kidding me? Man, if I wasn't so over allocated in Tesla, this is when I would buy, right? This damn second. But I'm over allocated and I'm not doing it. Uh, my reaction is, uh, you know, the fund manager is like looking, like, where did everyone go? Like, why is everyone leaving us? I didn't do anything, right? What did I do? Tesla went down. I didn't do anything. So yeah, that, that, that's the reaction. And that, that's, I think it's pretty accurate. Earnings again, uh, April 17th. So we got a ways for that. Implied volatility will go up as we lead into earnings. Curve, no no new contracts for them. Just 100 contracts still. 230 strike, 30% 30 out of the money. All right, let's look at the payments. Really? Nothing. So let's not look at the payments. What the hell? What is that? Divided by K. Oh. It's K3. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. All right, so this is how much it's going to cost to close out the position. You know, if you look at the 205, for example, six cents, all right? You, you, can't, you can't get any closer. Just close the damn position. But they don't do that. Maybe they will. You never know. All right, anyway. anyway, the other ones too, man. They're just like, they cost like pennies to close. So it's just amazing. Anyway, net asset value seven hundred fifty-eight million. Nav is sixteen sixty-five, and trade price fifteen ninety-nine. So for the people who do the premium discount, I don't know what the website says. I assume it's the same. Um, actually, you know what? Let's check that. So the Nav says sixteen sixty-five, and the trade price fifteen ninety-nine. Not like I have time to do this. My wife is waiting for me upstairs so she can get ready for work. I told her I have to get this video done because there's 
no time. Anyway, what do we got here? Um, where the heck is this? The net. The nav shows seventeen nineteen. This is not updated. Closing price seventeen twenty one. Clearly, the website is not updated, so we can scratch that idea. Okay, forget it. All right, let's just look at the pre market for TSLY. Come on, market watch. All right, what do we got here? Ready? Drum roll. Do, 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 do. Oh, wow. Could you imagine? Another red day. Holy crap. All right, Tesla is down 0.78% pre market. Again, it's about, it's probably 5 a.m. now. I hope not, but we'll see. Actually, let me check. 4.56 uh, a.m. Eastern time for context. Um, so Tesla is currently at 175.16. So. We shall see what happens today, all right? We shall see what happens tomorrow. <clears throat> but we have two trading days left for all these funds. Again, I hope these videos are making sense. The important part about these videos is you understand how these funds work. We understand the movement of them every day. Um, you know, whether or not you hold Tesla, Kony, or misty, it may be irrelevant as long as you understand how the fund works because you don't want to buy something that you don't understand. Um, and again, I will make a poll, I'll, I'll do a poll. I'll do a poll probably maybe towards the end of this month or so. And I'll ask which fund do you want me to eliminate? And, you know, between these three, and if so, if, if Tesla is chosen, I will actually eliminate Tesla. But we'll see. Uh, I doubt it. Uh, so we'll say, you know, which one do you want me to eliminate? And then I'll have another poll following that. Actually, no, I won't. I'm sorry. The first month, I'm definitely doing NVIDIA. That'll be the next new fund. And then after that, um, I'll do another poll, which one to remove. And then another poll, which one to add. And it'll be like a rotational, um, you know, the third wheel, rotational third wheel. Um, so whatever you guys continue to vote to keep will stay, right? And whatever you vote to you know, kick out will, will be removed. You know, plus I think it's more interactive and it's kind of fun. Um, and you guys may pick something I would never pick and that may, inter you know, that could be interesting. So anyway, I just wanted to let you guys know that. Um, so I'll do that at some point if I re remember, uh, by the way, the date and time is confirmed, uh, with Sylvia. I don't think I'm doing it live though. Cause I don't even know Again, this is my going to be my first interview, and I, I didn't plan on doing interviews. By the way, this is never part of my uh, what I wanted to do. But again, they reached out to me, so you know I thought about it, and I guess I, I figured you know why not? Let's just see how it goes. So again, I'm going to interview uh, Sylvia Jablonski from Defiance next week, Thursday uh, at two p.m., uh, and then I'll post it. But again, I'm not. I don't plan on going live. Uh, it's probably just going to be pre-recorded, and I'll post it just because I do not even know what the hell I'm doing. Um, I think I'm just, I don't know. I, again, it, I have to figure all this out because I'm not, again, I'm not prepared for this. So, um, but I will prepare some questions. Uh, I haven't even thought about that yet either. Again, this is not something I have time for, but the opportunity came up, so I'm just gonna follow through with it and see how it goes. But this is not this is not gonna be something normal I'm doing. Like, I don't wanna do interviews all the time. You know what I mean? I don't have time for interviews. I don't have time to prep for interviews. I don't have the technology for interviews. Um, but I'll do this one because, you know, if, it, if it's Sylvia or Jay, obviously, those are the two funds. Their funds is what I cover, or what I've been covering all the time. So if I'm going to do someone, it's going to be one of those two. And since I haven't really seen many people interview Sylvia, I figured it's a good opportunity uh, for me to, you know, and the channel, of course, and you guys, you know, I know would appreciate it. So, so I'm going to do it. Um, so yeah, stay tuned for that. Um, so that's the only other update. Uh, oh, there is a new fund coming out. I'll try to actually make a video this 
at my on my lunch break again i'm gonna miss another workout but i'll do it on my lunch break they they pay weekly um that's all i'm gonna say uh so i'll get this i'll i'll look into the prospectus i'll do some research real quick and i'll get something out hopefully at lunchtime today just because it interests the hell out of me I'll, you know um, but it's not like the WKLY one and you know, those ones suck, but you know, this one looks pr actually pretty decent. But anyway, guys, I told you this is not financial advice. Um, but obviously, you know, do your own research, you know, I'm just a schlep on YouTube, just hit and record on a tel on a, on a cell phone and that's it. So, you know, you guys know better, you know, you know, your risk tolerance. So do your own research for yourself, for your own good, for your sleep at night. Um, if you enjoyed this content, as always, hit that like button. It, you know, it's greatly appreciated. I know we've been we've been slacking on the likes lately, but maybe we could pick it up today. Um, I got no keyword, except that it's raining. So maybe say that. I don't know. But I got to go. I hope you guys enjoy your day.